So, what makes this chicken salad recipe different from the other traditional chicken salad recipes where you basically just boil boneless, skinless breast in water and then mix it with some mayonnaise and call it a day. This is a chicken salad that really celebrates the flavor of chicken. Do your best and invest in a flavorable chicken. And usually what that means is at the very least free range with bone and skin on, in fact, like buy a whole chicken. The skin is a very crucial part in this recipe. And if you're gonna be like, I'm gonna just use boneless breast or skinless thighs or whatever, go away. This is not one of those recipes for you. I did my best to go out of my ways to buy a chicken that resembles what you would usually get in the US, which is super big breast, very little legs. First thing you do is I'm going to remove the wings, okay? I don't include the wings in my chicken salad recipe, but this is not gonna go to waste. I usually save it for stock. The next thing I like to do is I like to remove the wishbone. It always gets in the way when I'm trying to take the meat out. If you don't know, the wishbone is basic, basically this V-shaped bone that is holding the breast in place. So I usually use a scissor. I don't usually bother using a knife. So here, you can feel it with your finger and I just sever it here and I use my scissor to separate it from the meat and then I just pull it out. I don't really mind if it breaks. So now I'm gonna separate the chicken into two parts, the breast and the legs, so white meat and dark meat, okay? This entire part is the breast. And once I get to the backbone, I'm going to cut the backbone away. The reason why I'm doing this is because chicken thighs and chicken breasts don't cook optimally at the same temperature. So if I just treat this whole chicken with the same temperature and the same cooking time, the breasts are always gonna get overcooked before the legs. So that's why I'm separating them. And then you would have one leg part like this, and then one whole breast like that. You can cut this like protruding backbone, but make sure that this oyster, which is these two little nice morsels of meat that, you know, connects the leg to the backbone, make sure that they're intact, okay? Those are my, the best part of the chicken. So you can cut this protruding backbone and save that for stock as well. I'm going to season the chicken with sea salt. I just give it a little sprinkle you don't want to overly season the chicken because there's more seasoning to come later on, okay? Give it a little rub. And I like to kind of like bend this, the bones of the chicken on the leg part just so that it lays flat, okay? So I'm gonna do double layers of aluminum. I'm gonna do the breast first. Probably this way better, okay? And then I'm going to close it up as tightly as possible without puncturing the foil. And you can see that I am basically having all the seam side facing upward. If it's downward, the juice is going to leak out of the pouch. And that's something I don't want to have happen. So now, I have this tightly wrapped chicken breast and I'm gonna do my legs. So here's preheated oven, 120 Celsius. Okay, not Fahrenheit, but Celsius. And then basically just put your two foiled pouches in the middle rack without any baking sheets on the bottom, all right? And then it will take about one hour and 30 minutes for the chicken to be cooked to the perfect doneness, which is very supple and soft. 
And if you have a sous vide machine, obviously um, you don't have to do this. You can wrap the chickens in your vacuum bag and then cook them according to your sous vide machine instructions. But like I said, I'm showing you how to do it with an oven because most people probably don't have a sous vide machine. So once the chickens are done, usually what I do is I leave them in the fridge overnight to be completely chilled, okay? But if you're in a hurry, you wanna do this like on the same day, um, you can basically stick it in the freezer for about like an hour, 45 minutes to like two hours for that to like, you know, completely cool off. You want them to be not room temperature, but like cold. The next part is the fun part. My favorite part, and that's torching the chicken skin. First, remove all the foil. You're gonna see like jellos, like little uh, juice that basically becomes jellos that's attached to the, the chicken. Okay? Like these little jellos. Do not throw them away. Those are pure essence of the chicken. If you throw them away, you're throwing away flavor, okay? So I'm just going to scrape as much as I can off of the foil. And there we go. You wanna make sure that it has a really good browning. And those jellos are obviously gonna melt away, you know, because they're gelatin and when they get heat up, they become liquid, right? So that is totally fine. They're just so satisfying, don't you think? I can do this all day. Like, I feel like nowadays I can't really cook without torching and chili. I think I'd have an addiction or something. What do you guys think? Do you guys enjoy torching or does this freak you out? Like, it's perfectly safe. So now the skin part, this part is done. I'm also going to torch the backside as well. And don't be like, you know, in a hurry, like take your time. Like this is not, this is fun. Like I don't, I don't want it to end. <laughs> Am I sick or something? And I'm like so obsessed with it. Like I actually would, dip the breast back into the melted jello and then I will go back and then torch it again. <laughs> so that's about how far I will go for the breast. You can see. And I'm gonna move on to the leg. Some of you may be like wondering, what the hell, why can't I just use like roasted chicken to do this? I don't know, it's different. The skin of a roasted chicken tastes different than a torched chicken skin. I don't know how to explain it. Like the torch almost gives it like a breath of the walk, if you know what I mean. It's a very elusive flavor or aroma that I can't really quite pinpoint. I can't really put, quite put my finger on it, but it tastes different than like roasted chicken skin. There, done. Now I'm gonna transfer them into the container that you're gonna toss the, um, the salad in. And it, it, it has to be big because there's gonna be a loads and loads of herbs to come later, okay? Let it cool down just a bit. The inside is not hot, but the surface is a bit hot. So I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit before I tear them with my hand. So now you will have all these um, liquid left. Transfer that into a sauce pot like that. I have about like three tablespoons, okay? So in the recipe I said, if you have more than two tablespoons, reduce it down to two tablespoons. So that's what I'm gonna do. So pretty self-explanatory, right? You just tear the meat off the bones. The difference between a hand-torn chicken 
and a knife cut chicken is that you get these extra surface areas to hold on to the sauce and flavor and all that. So I'm just gonna keep doing this and I'll be back. So all the chickens are shredded. I controlled it myself and ate as little as I possibly could. Now, the only thing left is mixing. We're gonna keep the sauce part very simple because like I said, we want to taste chicken. So Greek yogurt, the thicker the better. Minced shallot. This is a little bit unusual. Toasted mushroom powder. It's not um, something that everyone would have in their kitchen, but I highly recommend it. It's really easy to make and it adds a really good earthy undertone to the salad. Dijon mustard, white pepper, not black. They taste different. I don't know what to tell you. The chicken juice, the one that we reduced, right? If there's like a layer of fat, which there will because it's chicken, skim that off. We want as little liquid fat as possible because the fat is going to solidify because this is a cold salad. Also, pickled chili chopped. Last but not least, which is I think the second most important part of this recipe, the herbs. I know that's an obscene amount of herbs and that's what makes this salad special. It's as much of a chicken salad as it is a herb salad. A lot of people are shocked, but what they are, they're mint. I know, like if you have tasted like mint, the, the piece of mint that they stick on top of your cheesecake or something, and then you're like, oh, what does it taste like? Give it a taste. It's gonna taste horrible, okay? And you're like, there's no way in hell I'm going to add this amount of mint into my salad. But listen to me, okay? Like, number one, there are so many different varieties of mint. And usually what they put on top of your, in your mojito or your on top of your cheesecake, that is spearmint. That is, has that menthol like, you know, flavor to it. We don't want that. We want to use common mint, which has a, go, has, has a, has a rounder tips than like spearmint, you know, like with the pointy tip, okay? But actually, my favorite variety of mint is lemon mint. And I grow these myself. And it has this really nice lemony aroma to it. And it just pairs so well with the salad. Even if you don't have lemon mint, use common mint. That is fine too. And also, I have a little bit of tarragon in there too. I like that little hint of like licorice flavor. So mix up the chicken first. Now that's mixed, I'm going to add my herbs. A whole freaking bucket of it. So let's do this. You're going to toss it however you like. You want to use it your hand, that's fine too. You want to make sure that it's very, very well incorporated. And this is what you will more or less end up with. And there we have this beautiful summer torched chicken hand torn herb salad. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> Make sure that you get a bit of tarragon, a bit of mint, a bit of chicken. This will blow you away. I'm telling you. And it's not because I'm biased. I have brought this recipe to, I mean, brought this dish to so many parties. Everybody was like, what's in here? And I tell them mint and they're like, what? Because usually mints are not served this way as like a main character, but I'm telling you, it's gonna surprise you. That's what makes this salad so refreshing and different and summery. And light as you're eating it, because you know, there's no mayonnaise, it's just Greek yogurt. Very, very simple seasoning that accentuates the chicken, I'm not trying to overpower it. Even the mint itself is not overpowering the chicken because of that torching process that we just did. So please, please give this recipe a try as is. It's definitely a keeper. If you're looking for more fun chicken recipes, also check out my 
smashed fried chicken with chili sambal recipe. That one is also a keeper. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.